And yeah, right now this is a... Is this a sequence break? Yes. There, this is sort of a sequence break. You you see the little grapple beam blocks up there, but it's... the gra That just saves you from taking damage. It's very, or actually, yeah, I would need... Yeah, I would. I do need to wall jump. So this is a wall jump sequence break. You can just instead of grapple beaming across the top there, you can just take the hits on the spikes and wall jump up, and that gets us the wave beam, which is again one of the very early uh, sequence breaks that I ever discovered in Super Metroid. My first time going through the game after learning to wall jump consistently. The spacer beam and the wave beam were like the two things that I was. I I came to those rooms and it's like. I can do this right now. I don't even need to go the, get the whatever the hell they expect you to have. So it's a rare instance where they this this actually it seems like it's just a weapon upgrade, but it actually does open up a few possibilities. But the game doesn't really show you them right away. Or actually, it's basically one up one possibility. I can now open up. Uh, you saw the little one-way doors uh, that popped up earlier. Can I wall jump up here? Uh, do I don't want to waste time wall jumping up here. I'll give it a few tries. Ooh, I'm impressed with myself for doing that. Um, I've lost my train of thought. And yeah, th this is actually a completely useless room. I just like having the extra missiles and it's on the way. But uh, yeah, the spacer doesn't really get you anything, but the wave beam is kind of a little door opener thing. It lets you open one-way doors from the other side. Because, yeah, the, what this does is is it lets your shots go through platforms. Or go, go through terrain, at least. Not through enemies, but through terrain. And so, yeah, you can just shoot right through the one-way door and uh, open them up from the other side. Not not the green one-way doors, though. Those require supers, so... I, I'll maybe... I'll point them out when we come to them, but... So, I think... So, we've got the speed booster. What else do we need down here? I, I am going to be fighting Krokemeyer to get the grapple beam. I... Or, actually... I, I don't necessarily need it. I have... Sh Shine Spark. That's yeah. That's the other really common, relatively simple uh, special trick that, or special move that Samus has that you can use to do a lot of sequence breaks. And there's a a glitch in combination with that that uh, you can use the short charge. It basically, it's a bit complicated, and I can't really do it consistently. So I don't want to even try showing it. Um, I, d I did it once to skip to the rest ship without getting the grapple beam, but if if you want that, um, I don't think I need anything up there. If you want, yeah, if you want to get a super in depth, oh, am I? I should have got a map station at some point. I don't know where I'm going. Actually, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure this takes me up from where I was already. Or yeah, this is the normal way I think that you go through to get the wave beam. Normally, you'd come up from the other direction. And then, yeah, you go. Oh, yeah, but yeah, you come down and up and back around. Man, I really need like a pointer on screen or something. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have decided to hide my mouse curse. Or after all, yes, this is this is the right way to go. Because yeah, right now we're going to fight. There, yes, this this is the perfect example of what I was saying. Couldn't get through here unless we had the wave beam. And then the ice beam is the other sort of weapon upgrade that you get that's also uh, used for traveling places. Other than that, though, uh, plasma, spacer, not really used so much for travel, mainly just for power. Um, or maybe it was... Pretty sure I want to go left. And uh, that, that's actually one of the really cool things about Metroid. Another of the really cool things about Metroid. It's just, uh... It's got kind of like the whole lock and key thing going, where it's like you come across an impassable bit. Oh, this is like one of my favorite boss fights. It's not terribly difficult or... 
and this this kind of goes back to oops, back to what I was saying before. It's not particularly particularly action-packed or difficult or any of those things that I really like in a good 2D platformer, but it's got really cool. It's just a really cool set piece, which is mainly what Super Metroid is all about. It's not necessarily like the most fast-paced or action-packed game, but it's sort of a it, it's a real slow burn, and that plays out in the boss fights. They aren't particularly exciting, but they're really cool. It's like this guy, he doesn't actually have a health meter, you just notice he keeps taking steps back as I put missiles into his mouth, and eventually he'll come up to those whoops, blocks up ahead, and he falls into the acid and the skin melts right off his face. That is awesome. I'm showing this to you because it's a le this is a let's play, but there, there's actually a, a f in a free E tank you can get here, or not free in terms of health. You need a uh, again, it's a simple wall jump, and you can get here without using the grapple beam. Uh, take a bit of damage and wall jump. But normally you could actually go go and get that E tank while Crocomire is having the flesh melted off his face. So it's it's in terms of uh, like speed running like time savings, that you can get that E-Tank in zero seconds. You can go get it and come back, and Crocomire will still be having the flesh melted off of his face, so it's it, it costs you no time whatsoever to go get that E-Tank. Not that that's like a, like a super special speedrunning trick or anything, real, real Metroid speedrunners, or even just like modestly competent Metroid players don't even fight Crocomire, it's not too, too difficult to get through the game without, uh, can I get up there with a wall jump? Anyways, it's not, it's not super, super difficult to get through the game without, uh, the grapple beam, which is the weapon that we'll be getting at the end of this little segment that Crocomire unlocked. Oh, uh, do I want to waste time getting up there? Doesn't, it's, yeah, there was, and, oh, oh, fuck. This was the stopping point on my last playthrough of the game. Oh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so, my last couple times through the game, I got completely lost uh, trying to find the power bombs, because I completely forgot until just right back there where I had my oh shit moment. I completely forgot that you need the power bombs in order to uh, get the grapple beam. And that was a sticking point for me, because... I, I beat Crocomire, and I was, like, down there in the little speed booster pit trying to get the... figure out some way to get the... make the jump up to the grapple beam, and I couldn't do it, so I was looking all over the map for the freaking power bombs, and that's actually... because, yeah, I could... I did... yeah, I think I tried a few times to get up there, and I couldn't... I just assumed it was impossible, because... yeah, that that little turtle floating around up there, you, you grab onto that turtle with the grapple beam. So I figured, okay, this is a grapple beam room, no reason to go up here. But yeah, apparently I needed I needed to get up there for the power bombs, so... So yeah, that, that alone saved myself. Just finding the power bombs right away with no hassle <laughs> saved a good... saves me a good, like, half hour, 40 minutes off this run compared to my previous one. So we're... We've probably made up for some of the time I ma wasted just standing around talking to you guys. So, grappling beam. Um, a borderline necessary item for me. I'm not... You, you need this to get into the wrecked ship unless you uh, use a trick called the short charge in order to get a very quick shine spark. I don't even know if I'm going to be showing off... Or yeah, I'll be showing off the shine spark at some point, but... Normally you need to shine spark in order to get into the wrecked ship using, er, short charge, I mean, get into the, to get into the wrecked ship, and that's a trick that I have just cannot get consistently. It's like the, the mock ball I, in my practice runs, I was able to get a bit consistently, but as much as I've, as I've practiced, I have never been able to quick char, or quick, is it quick charge or quick boost? Probably quick boost. Uh, consistently. So, alas, we lesser mortals 
mere mortals must use the grapple beam to get into the wrecked ship. Yeah, right here. I couldn't open this door from the other side, even with the wave beam, because I need super missiles to activate this door. Er, that's... and again, I think there is actually a glitch that lets you do exactly that, but there is no reason to do so whatsoever, I don't think. It's in... oh right, the save point. And if I haven't... <laughs> I'm kind of going back and forth between just glossing over things and explaining things in excruciating, unnecessary detail. But yeah, I didn't explain what the grapple beam does, but you saw what it does. These cactus things always drop super missiles, if you need them. Or, uh, I need to save. Or did I save at the last save point? I probably should save at some point. I mean, this game isn't difficult in the slightest. Like, combat-wise, this is, like, pretty much entirely a game about explora exploration and soaking up the act atmosphere and getting to know the locales, in addition to being about, like, little speedrunning tricks, learning speedrunning tricks and op breaking the game open with all of the cool special moves and glitches that you can do. Okay. And and now that we have the speed booster, see, because yeah, we did we never needed the ice beam for anything up and um does this get us I forget what's behind here. A map station. Right, I don't think I've come across one of these yet, uh Oh, I'm actually glad I picked that up, because I would that was the other sticking point, is I couldn't remember how to get into the Lower Norfair uh, last time, but you, you can see the little boss icon there on the map, and a bunch of empty space that we'll sort of have to fill in using our Metroid senses. That, that's kind of the way this game works the first time through, is you sort of... Uh, the, the You go to the map stations, and it reveals the map to you, but it doesn't reveal everything, and you've got to explore uh, in order to do that, and but where explore basically means try out your special weapons and... Oh, I could have gotten the x-ray beam. Do I need the x-ray beam? I do not. So yeah, we're, we're scared. I, I'm a liar. We're, I'm not going to be showing you everything on this Let's Play. We're skipping the x-ray beam. We're skipping... We're, we're not skipping the ice beam, though. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I forgot the ice beam. I was so excited about the map and remembering how to get to Lower Norfair. <laughs> that, that's one of those funny things, that... How trying to go fast can it make you end up wasting a whole bunch of time. Because <laughs> that's what happened last time, through my last time through the game. I'd, I'd never bothered to get that map terminal. Because I was like, oh, I don't want to waste the few seconds it would take to get this. I don't need map terminals. I know where I'm going. And then I got lost on the way to Lower Norfair and wasted, like, 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, glad I got that map. I know way, way later in the game, when we come back here, I'll know where to go. <laughs> 